Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the Creative Differences Podcast. Happy Throwback Thursday. I'm Dallas, and this movie made me want to watch Knives Out again. I'm Colin, and you know, it's funny. I don't, I didn't really care for either of those movies, but Knives Out was less of a disappointment. So I'll give it that. Interesting. I'm Demi, and this was probably the first Agatha Christie project that I had ever seen. Welcome to the Creative Differences Podcast, your one-stop shop for movie reviews, fancast Fridays, Throwback Thursdays, and a number of other pop culture-related items. Today, we are doing a Throwback Thursday in honor of the release of Death of the Nile by watching Murder on the Orient Express. Yes, we are. If you're wondering, Gabby is probably off somewhere listening to stories about people being murdered because that's her vibe. True crime. Yeah, it's a wonder that she missed this one, but you know. She yeah, wanted no. to be here. Yeah. And yet. But before we get into it, please like and share and subscribe and rate and tell your friends and tell your mom and tell everybody. Because, okay, so at this point, I wanted to think, you know how sometimes I do like a threat that's movie related? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wanted to think of a movie relevant threat, but all that came to mind was subscribe or we'll take turns stabbing you. <laughs> and that feels yeah. like a lot. That's, so, a, that's too harsh of a threat. Yes. It's not, we're so not going to do that. Please just subscribe. <laughs> also. It's Throwback Thursday. And in case you're new to this, we do spoilers on Throwback Thursdays. So there will be spoilers. Just be ready. I'm going to start disclaiming that every Thursday so that people know what they're getting themselves into. Well, every Throwback Thursday. We don't do a Throwback Thursday every Thursday. No. Wow. Well, but, you know. That Maybe said, start saying it on Thursday. if you like completely decide to ignore that Dallas just gave you that warning and you want to yell at us about how we spoiled this movie, go ahead because at least it's engagement. That's what you need. <laughs> we'll take it. We already told you that there are spoilers anyway. All right. So. When was your first time watching this movie, and what was your reaction back then? I you. watched this movie in the theater, probably with you guys. Nope, I, I was saying. not there. Or not her. Probably with Colin? Were you I there? mean, my first time was in a theater. I feel like it would have been with you, because I don't think okay. this is one that like I would have been like, oh, I gotta go see that. Yeah. I but if you said, yo, I'm gonna go through, like... Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember really enjoying it until toward the end so mm -hmm. the way i remembered it before this rewatch was i liked everything until that very end scene but i actually started to get annoyed before that and it reminded me of that but i did enjoy the movie i was enjoying the ride until the end i remember walking out annoyed <laughs> and trying to talk about it without spoiling the ending for passersby in the hallway because you don't want to be that guy yeah um i feel like it's probably like what i remembered about the movie the only thing I remembered going into it was I liked it until the end. Mm -hmm. And I didn't remember, like, I remembered what the end was, but I didn't remember, like, how we got there. Mm. The further along this movie got, the less interested I became because I was like, oh, this is, yeah, this is where this is going. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> it's just, I've seen, I think, one other Agatha Christie thing. And, like, and then there were none slaps. I read that book. I haven't seen any adaptations of it, but I really like the book. I saw it as a play and it terrified me because I was like 10. I was like, why, the, yeah, why was are you making me watch this? I was a kid when I read it. Too. People are dying. <laughs> a lot of people are dying. Yeah. Anyway, to me. To me, what was your first time like? Dallas. <laughs> yeah, I saw this movie in theaters. I didn't, didn't go with you guys because I was not living in Pasadena at the time. I was living in Monterey. I was in school. I either went to see this movie with my, with my homie Brendan because he's usually the person I would go see movies with or I went to go see it with my friend Marty and another one of our cinematic arts major friends. I can't remember who it was. It's one of those two options. I don't remember. <laughs> I'm very, I'm leaning towards that it was Marty. I think that was the, the movie I went to go see with Marty. But yeah, I saw it in theaters. I enjoyed it, but I did have some issues with it. The ending was not one of the issues I had with that movie. I actually very much enjoy the ending of this movie. But yeah, I enjoyed it. I had fun. There were a couple of things that I was not fond of, but I was entertained the entire way through. Nice. I'm looking forward to finding out what our different issues were. The creative differences that, are? Aha! <laughs> All right, the movie is directed by Kenneth Branagh. You know Kenneth Branagh. He directed Thor, Artemis Fowl, a bunch of Shakespeare, Shakespeare stuff. That's like he is his, the he's that guy. best Shakespeare director that we have right now. And he also did the 2015 version of Cinderella, and I love True. that movie. He did all that. And it was written by Michael Green. I have a little cousin named Michael Green. It is not the same person. Damn, that would be impressive. Like, right? Because he is 13? <laughs> and this movie came out wow. five years ago. Yeah. And for him old. to have written two movies, because Michael Green also wrote the second one. So, like. Yep. Also, Michael Green wrote Green Lantern, Logan, and Blade Runner 2049, among other things. Whoa. Dude, right, what? He got some range. That's a he range. Got range, range on that. 
Like yeah, people man. hate the Green Lantern movie, and then you have Logan, Logan and Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Like, which is so funny because the overlap of people who love the latter two movies and like incessantly insult Green Lantern. It's a circle. That that Venn diagram is a circle, and it's like yeah, they're written by the same guy and other people collaboratively, mm-hmm. and it's based on the Agatha Christie book Murder on the Orient Express. The movie mm-hmm. stars <gasps> Kenneth Rana, Tom Bateman, Penelope Cruz. Willem Dafoe, Judy Dench, Johnny Depp, Josh Gad, Derek Jacoby, Leslie Odom Jr., Michelle Pfeiffer, and Daisy Ridley. Daisy. So many people. Just a train full of them. Like, I, <laughs> they, like I, right before this one, Demi had sent the trailer for the next movie so we could talk about that later. There are two screens of names because there are that many people. <laughs> Not just one. Usually they put them all in one and then they, they did that and they cut to another one and I was like, oh, Jesus. But that's what I love about movies like this, like detective movies. You mm-hmm. just hire, like, the coolest people you can possibly think of to play the characters who might have murdered somebody. That's so fun. Process of elimination until they're gone. Yep. Or until they all did it. IMDb summary states, when a murder occurs on the train on which he's traveling, celebrated detective Hercule Poirot is recruited to solve the case. <laughs> Colin, did you have an issue with my pronunciation? No, not an issue. I loved yeah. it. Okay, <laughs> it's beautiful. Please keep going like that. <laughs> That's how he says it. All right, story. You sound like Dexter. Omelet du Oh, there we Dexter. go. Not, Not the serial killer Dexter, Jesus. the child. Anyway. <laughs> all right, let's talk about the story. I'm going to say, first of all, I like this movie. I do enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Issues with the ending aside, I think the movie is very well written for the most part. Like They have really great dialogue. For me, I think it's just held back by the fact that it's an adaptation of what I determined to be a goofy ass story. I haven't read the book, mm-hmm. but like, there are parts of it that I'm just like, ooh, okay. But yeah, dialogue is great. I enjoy the character interactions. Hercule is very entertaining as a protagonist, but we can get to him when we do character. What do you guys think of the story, Colin? Yeah, I mean, I, I like it up to a certain point. Mm. Once, Jesus Christ, the light behind me is like, <laughs> I have... The sun the reached watch. into your room. Like, once it becomes clear that everything is connected is when I start getting less interested. Mm. That's when I get more interested, funny enough. Yeah, no. It's, it's interesting because I would think that I would, and I think usually I would, but for some reason this one. But anyway, like it's kind of like you said, the writing in this is so good. Like The dialogue is just so much fun yeah. throughout, and that makes it really enjoyable. It's a fun ride, even if the destination kind of sucks. It's the journey that matters, guys. It's always the journey that matters. See, I don't think that's always true. Um, and I think in mysteries, especially murder mysteries, that is doubly not true. I think that mm. in a mystery, the journey can be fun, but it hinges on the destination for me because it's the solving of a mystery. And so in this case, when the solving was so not to my taste, I was like, well, all right. I was making a joke, but that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with Demi's joke and I agree with Colin's sentiment that this is a movie I walked out. I liked the movie, but I disliked the solution so much that I haven't seen this movie since I saw it in theaters that day. And it's not like, oh, I want to avoid that movie because I didn't like it, but I've never mm-hmm. really felt the need to revisit it because mm-hmm. it's like, oh, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going anywhere I'm going to enjoy. I'm going to enjoy getting there, but then I get there, I'm like, oh, this, we're, we're here? This is where See, we're that's, I kind of like you said, now I kind of want to watch Knives Out again because I remember thinking that movie was fine, but mm-hmm. I wondered, like, I knew the ending of that one didn't bother me like this one did. So it's like, if I go in knowing that that doesn't, I don't know, I'd be interested to know. watch it again. See Expectations. How I feel about it. Hmm. Expectations. Ugh. Yeah, I don't really have much to say about the story. I thought the story was fine. It's a murder mystery. For me, my issue with the film was always that I remember coming out of it the first time and being like, the fun in watching a murder mystery for me is that even though I personally, I already know I'm not going to figure it out. I'm not that person. I'm Mm -hmm. not that person. I'm not going to figure it out while I'm watching it. We'll get to the end and I'll be like, oh, snap. 100%. The issue I had was that I couldn't pick up on any of the clues Poirot was picking Mm. up. He would do stuff and I'd be like, how did you even get to this conclusion? Yes. Like he would pick up like uh, the one that sticks out to me is when he finds the note in the train car and he Mm -hmm. automatically knows that he should burn it so that he can see what the letter says. And I'm like, how yeah. how did you well, get there i want to be able to like after i've watched it once we've gotten to the end and we and right you should be able to go back is, and i should be able to go back and be like oh that's how you came mm-hmm. to the conclusion mm-hmm. that this is what happened and this is what happens even though poirot is supposed to be a character who is Whoa. always ahead of the game because he's a mm-hmm. master detective so 
But I still want to be able to be like, even though I got there late in the game, like in that whole hour and a half later in the game, I understand how you got to that conclusion. That was always my main issue with the movie was that I myself could not be like, he got here because of this. Watching it the second time around, I liked it a lot more because I was aware that that was a thing that I was going to be getting into. So Mm. that was like, cool. I know now that I'm not going to understand how he even got to that conclusion. That's just who he is as a character. And that's fine. And then I actually really liked the ending because you go into a murder mystery, you automatically know at the end of the movie, you're going to figure out which one of these people did it. And I thought that it was very unique that at the end of it, you find out. Surprise, motherfucker. All of them. (laughs) (laughs) See, I think it's not just that conclusion that I don't like. It's that literal scene when it Mm. goes black and white and they're all just like, aha. aha." Like, it's just, it looks so stupid to me. And I don't know why. Interesting. Because I don't think there's a way that you could film that that I would like it just because of what the concept is. Right. Like, let's all take turns and stab at a guy. Like, that's not going to, it's just going to be funny to me. That's what it looks like. It it, it did. It looked like, you know, a gang. And I was like, gang of like 1920s people. I was like, all right. (laughs) Yeah, all right, all right, all right. I liked but, that yeah. in the end, all of them ended up being the person who did it because that's something that you never, you're mm-hmm. never going to mm-hmm. suspect it. You're not going to be like, oh yeah, all of them. Like that's not even a conclusion I would ever come to because why would all of them do it? <laughs> and like hearing the way that they're all connected to one another, I'm just like, oh, that's kind of cool that like See? you guys, were, you guys mm-hmm. were so upset that they killed your homie that you guys said, yo, we got to murk this dude. Well, it's like, See, because it makes me think about what you said, because there's one that sticks out to me of how does he know? I don't remember her name in the what? There are so many moments like that in this movie. Right. But I mean, the one that sticks out to me in particular is I don't remember her fake name, but Linda Um, Arden, uh, the mom. Linda Arden. How does he know that that's her? Oh, oh, Michelle Pfeiffer. No, that's the real name. Yeah, Michelle Pfeiffer. Michelle Pfeiffer. Like that one literally came out of nowhere for me. He was just like blah 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 this one and this one and this one but then also there's you and i was like you didn't there was not there's nothing she didn't that's the thing that's the thing though is there's nothing for a lot of this like this nigga is reaching like michael jordan and space jam to get to some of these conclusions and that's what bothers me because they can all be you know y'all a gang y'all gang whatever i don't even mind the whole we all did it thing but the way that he gets to some of it and I know there are people who go into a movie mystery and want to solve it. Mm-hmm. And those kind of people get pissed off when you do something like what Demi was talking about before. It's like, there's something like you have this letter and you know to burn it, whatever. But there are other, there are a handful of conclusions that he's kind of just guessing. And it's right. Like, oh, your dad was a chauffeur. I bet he chauffeured for this family. Like, oh, this woman had a fake name. Her name could have been Goldenberg. Why not? He, he I bet she's Jewish. Kind of... And he does that through the movie. And it's like once he yeah. gets to the um the sick lady and her like aggressive the dancer oh, I cartoon love husband. Them. Where he's so, like, I I'm just gonna so kill much. everybody for some I reason. Hate them so much. But like, I love how angry he gets for her. I'm just like, yo, you know what? Respect. Beat everybody up for your wife. <laughs> I wanna get to no, them when we get you to You don't characters. have to beat people up but... anyway. <laughs> I love them. But like that scene is like, okay, fine. They edited her name. So you know her name is actually Helena. Right. Okay, I'll give you that. But like around that time is when it started to get goofy for me. It kind of like a like Autobio said in Beastmaker to me, like this shit is getting goofy. <laughs> he was like, Oh, uh Arden. Hmm. That could be a fake name. Her real name could be Goldenberg. She could be tied to the family. Like you have things like Daisy Ridley says, Oh, I like maps. And he says, You must have been the governess for this child because the child said like someone said, the governess well, was into geography. On. It's like, no, nigga. that one, that one I understood. That one, oh. even I could get to because they said it in the exact same way. It was literally almost word for word the exact same quote. Who said it the exact same way? Daisy Ridley says it at the beginning of the movie. She says something about, well, I always like push geography first so that they can at least know their way through, through the world or something like that. And then Lucy Boynton's character, Helena. She mm-hmm. says it in almost the exact same fashion when discuss when talking about her governess. The only thing that throws really me geography. off, yeah, she says it almost the exact same way. It's almost the exact same quote. The only thing that threw me off about that is that Daisy Ridley is not old enough to be this woman's governess, but okay. No. Okay, that's, she's our age. They look the same age. And They're two so years apart. I went to look it up. Daisy like... Ridley is only two years older than that woman. See, exactly. And I could just, like, I wasn't even thinking metatextually. I was just looking at the characters like, no. 
governess yeah, is like like, that old. like, a, like you taught her and raised her. How how did you do that? You were raising yourself at the same time? Like, yes, absolutely. And he just calls people out on things that if he could prove it, he wouldn't be able to prove it there. Like he doesn't have the evidence to back up the things he's saying. And Especially the only movies. reason they're true is because the movie needs them to be. And it needs to be, oh, let me just connect everybody on this train. But he's just shouting things into the void and they just land because it just so happens that, oh, you were right. She did have a fake stage name. It was Goldenberg. She was part of this family. Oh, this guy quit being a policeman. Willem Dafoe, you quit being a cop. It must be because you were in love with a woman who was wrongly accused and killed herself. Like, that are you kidding one, me? He could have killed. That was like quit for any reason. layers of where he was a cop and then he became a detective. But then he took on a fake name and a fake accent. And all of this connects to the woman who died, who got like a minute of conversation about her. And somehow that. So, again, I say that oh, this is not this is not Kenneth's fault. But again, I'm going to blame it on <laughs> Kenneth because Agatha is dead. Again, I, well, okay. <laughs> Agatha Christie might have actually written it very well. We don't know. We didn't read the novel. But it's dead. But it's like I said earlier, my main issue the first time I watched it was that I didn't know how he was coming to these conclusions. And then once I just accepted that I didn't know how he was coming to these conclusions, I was like, well, this movie's a lot better for it. He just is this way. So that makes it worse for me, because I feel like if he was in a situation where he was trying to figure out the connect, like, you know, if it's, hey, everybody on the train is connected to a case, find out how. And then you tell me this guy quit being a cop. OK, maybe this thing happened. But it's just. Let me tell you how you're all connected to this case and all of you are murderers, but also you're not killers. Once I've seen a movie, once I'm willing to suspend my disbelief for something like that, I'm like, okay, well, now I know. Mm. So let me suspend my disbelief for that. I know that this character is just going to figure it out because that's the type of character he is. And that makes this movie better for me to enjoy it. Okay, but also, though, it also bothers me immensely that there's no, that he doesn't tell the police that nothing happens with that i understand are why we talking about characters that. now I, th- I feel like we're just talking about characters hold on no because i'm not done with because we're just talking about poirot now well no for me I mean, this, this is more that's about more of a story the way he me. um fair but for me this is more about the way that certain things tie together like penelope cruz is like hey i was surprised once i don't like to be surprised and he was like oh you were watching the baby <laughs> 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 like nigga what i said i was surprised once and I don't like to be surprised. And you took that to mean you must have been in charge of the baby See, that I was like, murdered. Like, no. I feel no. like your issue with the movie is not the ending. Your issue with the movie what I'm is that nothing leads up to that it's, ending. It's, well, it's yeah, like, how he gets there. Like, how he gets there is worse. But the thing with, like, with Colin's issue is that scene. That scene is when we get a lot of these dumb reveals. Well, I think because that's when he starts listing the... everything like, oh, you, boom, you got surprised once you were watching the baby. You, well, it's uh, like... your dad was a chauffeur. He drove for the family. You, you quit being a cop. You were in love with a woman. You, uh, and the dude is like, hey, bro, I'm about to die anyway. I'm going to just tell you. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think part of it for me is that what it, what it feels like is by the time, like some, at some point during the movie, and I have no idea when he has figured out that everyone is connected and is trying to figure out how. So the question isn't, are they all connected? It's they are. And how is each one? Because I don't know that they're all connected. It does feel like it's coming out of nowhere, but he's able to put the pieces together because he already has this underlying thesis of they're all connected to this. I just got to figure out how. And so then he can Which, start putting like, like names why? to faces <laughs> and, and stuff. And then it's like, okay, that makes sense. But like how you got there. Well, I mean, he knows Daisy Ridley and Leslie Odom Jr. at the very least are connected. So why not everybody at that point? Bro, if I see because two people talking before they get lead. on the train, I'm not going to assume everybody on the train knows Well, no, but, it, but remember, it wasn't just, it was what she said. What she said very much definitely tipped him off. Yeah, like, oh, you know, uh, when it's done, we'll be free from racism or something like that. I don't think it was from racism. I think it was just <laughs> no, free. No, it wasn't that. It wasn't that. Yeah, just, bro, all right. <laughs> you can go to the characters. But once again, we say that we do actually like this movie. It's just, you know. I, I don't okay. know that Colin does, but I like it. I... I just, mm, mm, ah, mm. he said he enjoyed like, the journey i did and the Fair. thing is like i want i love the way this movie is written i still they, they, like the dialogue is spectacular i think all the characters do stick out they're very different mm-hmm. in a lot of ways and so that makes it really fun i think my problem is that it's a mystery and the solution to the mystery i think sucks anyway characters i feel like if i met hercule Poirot, i would want to punch him in the face very quickly I He's don't not likeable. like him. He's not nice. He like and he's I not guess mean fine. either, though. He's, he's not, nice to some people, but he's that, he's like yeah. ahead, he's just a strange dude. 
he's weirdly demanding and it's like i don't know i just i i don't i feel like there are maybe because i'm just thinking of like sherlock holmes but i feel like it's just so sherlock holmes cliched. isn't likable either no, no but that's my point is that i think it's really cliche to have the detective be like abrasive and kind of an asshole but oh he's a genius and it's like you can be a genius and not be a dick your eggs don't have to be the same size you i don't ass. i don't <laughs> know if he's a dick so much as he's just precise and specific because he's not being mean to people when he's saying that he wants things done this way he's not being rude or anything of the sort he just not, is particular which is like he's see, like he's anal he still, but that doesn't mean that right. you're mean it doesn't it's kind of a diva like, at yeah what he's a diva. point do other people have to conform to what you want like what are the limits of that if a guy doesn't straighten his tie, are you just not going to talk to him? If the, <laughs> like, you didn't eat the eggs, okay. But like... No, that made me mad. Like, that kid well, ran up and down oh, the block over for those and eggs. Over. And they and then he was like, eggs over you can over. keep the eggs. Like, nigga, if you don't eat these eggs... I... Especially because, were the last eggs perfect? Were those what he wanted? And then he said, no, you can have them because no, I gotta go? There was a they were there well was, cooked, they but perfect. they were not perfect. Yeah, because he was like, ah, oh, I blame the chicken. Which is like, you know, he's nice mm-hmm. to the kid, at least, but still... I ran up and down the streets for these eggs for you. And you well, get up and not eat them. He had a mystery. He needed. He had a case that he needed to go solve. Yeah, better. They're eggs. Take them with you. I didn't <laughs> well, make you a bowl actually, of oatmeal. Yeah, how were they? Because if they were like hard boiled, you could literally just take them with They're you. They're not hard boiled. They cook them probably for four soft. minutes. Those are soft. Yeah, that's like in the cup and stuff. But still, you, you could have. Drink them. <laughs> <laughs> not going to not eat these eggs, Hercule. No, I like Hercule Perot. I think that he's just so. There's something so absurd. It's like it's like when you watch Knives Out and you like fall in love with Benoit Blanc. Like he's just so weird. There's something very off about you, which is probably <laughs> the reason why you can solve all these mysteries because you just do not see the world in the same way as everybody else. Something's just weird. I like the line he has where he describes why he sees things that way. He says, "I can only see things as they should be, not as they are." Yes. So I like, like that what does that mean? So what like does that mean? when he sees a crack in a picture, like he sees the picture without the crack so he notices like oh man that crack really stands out to me because i can see what this picture is supposed to be and that's how he noticed it like boot crack or whatever feel like he would be really fun to fuck with (laughs) because you think about you could like have the painting and then put a crack in it intentionally as the artist then he'd be like that painting isn't supposed to have a crack and be like yeah (laughs) that's the artistic purpose suck it like i'd want to take him to the museum of modern art and just watch him lose his mind (laughs) but the thing is though he would probably look at it and that would probably be how they should be because that's what they are but that's not what he's. But what they no, no, are no, isn't. Tricky. Don't don't dive too deep into it. <laughs> yeah, but it is a, a very nice beautiful surface line, level I think. line. <laughs> but yeah, he doesn't like imbalance and stuff like that. It's very literal and figurative at the same time. Okay, you know what? When you say that, he sounds like a more bearable version of Thanos. So you know what? I'm kind of with it. Yeah, perfectly <laughs> balanced as I would like things to be. If if, if right, but I'm not gonna like in a more ideal out world to get that. I'm just yeah. gonna tell you who murdered somebody. Like, I'm not okay. gonna throw half yes. of you off this train. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, he's cool. He's very good uh, at his job. I mean, do we want to cover the? 13, I don't want to cover every character <laughs> in this movie. I just like, are there characters for you guys who like you specifically like 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 or who stand out to you? Because like some of these characters uh, do not get a lot of screen time. I no. I don't know the actor's name. I just know him as Jacob Kowalski because that's what I know him as. Josh but Gad. I, that's not Kowalski. Yeah, is that Josh Kowalski's Gad? Kowalski's not in this movie. That's Josh Gad. Are you serious? I thought yeah. that was Kowalski. That's Ola. Yeah. That's wild. Anyway, <laughs> him, he and Willem Dafoe. I just, I, I know, fine, you can put racism in it, but like, okay, at least Willem Dafoe was like, yeah, you know what? I'm sorry about that. I was, that was my cover. I was just being racist. I love racist. that line. Like, like, that's good. It's like, oh, my bad about the color cracks. Right. That was good. But like, <sighs> Josh Gad being like, yeah, you know, those Spaniards, they just, they just love murder. They just, you got to look at that guy. Like, what? <laughs> the- <laughs> That bothered me because, you know, it's 1930s. I assume everyone on that train is racist. But the, fact that, he, the fact that he had just previously said, I don't hold a man's race against him. And then he was like, but also, Hispanic bro over there, watch him. You know, they like to kill people. It's like, yo. And he's just like, you they just said you didn't death. hold a man's race against him. He was like, right, death on the race. nutrients. That's, I, that's why I love when Poirot calls him out on it, like immediately after. He's like, bro, you just said. And yeah, then he goes, me. oh, well, I guess I'm not then. You know, like yeah. he's like, I guess it depends on the race, and I'm just like, what? Whoa! But also, like, oh, I forgot, time, I am racist. I don't know if you can take that at face value, though, because they were all in on it. 
So I think they actually yeah. like legitimately I all our friends. He's they add their own stories. Yeah. And they were like, all right, my character's gonna be right. That, oh man, I wish I could see, see that okay, conversation. But that's it, right? It's <laughs> a choice to be like, I'm gonna be racist. Yeah. But Why? Colin, Colin, you don't They're playing <laughs> don't societal archetypes at that point. They're all going, This is what society is. Now let me play into it. Yeah. If I'm Hercule and I get on that train in nineteen thirty four and none of these white people are racist, I'm gonna be suspicious. I'm gonna be like, hold I'm, up. I'm definitely none suspicious. None of y'all are racist. Uh uh-uh. uh. Y'all working together. Y'all all killed this nigga. Let's go. Please. <laughs> That's what it would tip you off. That's what it would tip me off. That's what it would tip me off. Like, <laughs> at least two of y'all got to be racist. But I would just wish I could see the conversation, like the post check in the, in the compartment <laughs> when Josh Gad's character is like, all right, hear me out. My character is going to be racist. <laughs> and then... We love to jump dude, on like, actually, yes. Like, oh, I like where your head's at. I like where your head's at. I'm going to be a Nazi. <laughs> Meanwhile, well, Daisy like, Ridley's character and Leslie Odom Jr.'s character were probably looking at them like, what the hell? Like, what? The-? And then um, that one actor I like, uh, Manuel Garcia Rufo, he mm. plays the Cuban dude. I like that actor a lot. He's in Magnificent Seven. He's in Six Underground. He's dope. But I just feel like his reaction to Josh Gad saying that, like, why? Why do you, why do you want to be racist? <laughs> why? Can you explain that to him? What do you mean by that? That's the short film that we need. I need that. I need this same cast who's coming back and be like, all right, so here's what we're going to do. Like, right, I'm gonna be racist. Um, why? I just feel like it's right for the character, you know. Going as Tarantino. You mean you? <laughs> exactly. Uh, Dallas, do you have any characters that that stuck out to you? Because there's like 20 of them. There's so many. Um, the number I just keeps like... growing every time we mention it. <laughs> right. It's 35 niggas on the string. I like um <laughs> Daisy Ridley because she is very not racist. She's down with the swirl. But it's funny that she's not racist because when I first saw her, I don't know if it was the lighting. And Daisy Ridley is a beautiful woman. We all know this. But I was like, did they make her whiter? <laughs> because, like, <laughs> I think maybe it was the snow or something. But she looked whiter than the cast of a Greta Gerwig movie in that first scene. I was like, yo, what's up? But, you know, I got used to it. I think it was just the lighting and the snow and all the whiteness reflecting off of each other. But she was great. She was very sweet. She liked black dudes. But speaking of people who aren't racist, Marquez. I like Marquez because he is just really friendly. And he's so happy all the time to talk to anybody yeah like like every I, time there's he's like oh man you know my dad came and he was broke and all this stuff was happening but look at me now i got cars uh, i got like, a lot I i'm happy loved when he was like yeah i just decided i'm not gonna lie or you know i'm yeah. just gonna tell like it is because i've had some shit and it was like that's great i love that you're actually lying and we'll find out later but <laughs> yeah because i'm never gonna lie i've decided i'm never gonna lie again i'll tell you anything i love that guy Characters that stand out to me. I mean, obviously, like we were just talking about Daisy Ridley. I love Daisy Ridley as a fan of Star Wars. She plays my favorite Star Wars character of all time. So I remember when this movie came out being really excited because it was like the second big Hollywood movie that she was coming out with because Last Jedi wasn't coming out for another year. Force Awakens had come out like two years before. So I was just super hyped. What a charmed time to be a Star Wars fan when the worst criticism was, mm, this feels kind of like the old one. Yeah. <laughs> the old days. I loved her character. She was so, I guess, anti racist, I guess you could say. I love when Willem Dafoe does his little racist act that we don't know mm-hmm. is an act yet. And he's right. just like, you wouldn't mix your wines together. It would ruin, it would ruin the drink. And she looks at her wines and she just pours the other one in, into the other. And she's like, I like a good rosé and takes a sip from it. Oh, See, man, I love that. That was my thing. Because when he said that, my thought was like, wait, does rosé not exist at this point? How does that work? And then she kind of answered that. So it's like, dog. Is that how you make rosé? You just mix red and white wine? I think I guess so. Because so. I don't drink wine. So I, I don't, don't either. Know. <laughs> I don't either. I think that's what it is. Now, I don't know if the ratio is. I don't know if it's a one to one. Right. But I don't I think know. wine drinkers in the in the audience, let us know in the comments how you get a rosé. Yeah, but I just I loved it because her her attitude is like, God, you're such an idiot, and as she's doing it. Mm-hmm. Obviously, at the time, I was very excited to see Leslie Odom Jr. because I had been a fan of his for years because he was in Smash, and I was very surprised to see him and Daisy Ridley playing love interests off of each other. Mm-hmm. Still, don't know how old her character is supposed to be. For anyone wondering, his name is Doctor All You Thoughts. Uh, what? That's not. Exactly his Doctor, name. Are you, all your thoughts. That's not his name, actually. Um, but I can't say his name because I don't know it. It's like, I, 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 I don't know. Like, I mean, I, I, they said it. I saw it in subtitles. I still couldn't tell you what it is. Yeah, it's a very difficult name. So but I decided all it's all you thought. Well, thanks <laughs> for that. No problem. And I also really liked Michelle Pfeiffer's character because Michelle Pfeiffer is just charming. 
Like she just comes, she comes on screen and automatically I'm just like, wow, look at that energy. It, she's so great. It also probably helped that I watched Batman Returns recently. So I sure still did. was like, I'm a fan because Selena Kyle. But yeah, she's just great in this movie. I, I love watching her in it. But yeah, those are the probably the three <laughs> that stand out most to me out of the uh, 25 characters in this movie. <laughs> she was funny to me because of the end scene when, you know, he's pointing out people shouting random accusations at them. They're like, yeah, you're right. When <laughs> yeah, he says right. who she is, like, you're Linda Art. And she takes off her wig. Yes. And like, yo, now I'm a brunette. And it's like, yo, that's not a disguise. <laughs> if I know what Linda Arden looks like, you being a brunette now doesn't mean I don't know your look. I obviously didn't know who Linda, like, I didn't know what you looked like. Blonde hair or brunette hair. That's not how I got here. Why did you put the wig on? Who was that for? At that point, she took it off to reveal herself. It's a, it's a reveal. It's a silly well, like, thing about mask it fake is beard. it's I think I kind of get where Dallas is going with it because we don't know what Linda Arden looks like, so it's not a reveal for us. No. Everybody on the train she knows, so it's not a reveal for them. Hercules no. already figured it out, so it's not a reveal for him. So who at that point is it for <laughs> besides the fact that like she's an actress? I mean it's symbolic. That's all it is. It's just a symbolic reveal. That's so silly. It's this idea of like she was wearing this wig and all of this stuff to cover up her identity. And now that she's finally going to be who she actually is, she removes all of that. It's just a, it's a visual symbol. That's symbolism is all. See, here's the problem is the way you describe that is just the act of someone removing a disguise. It didn't sound <laughs> symbolic. It's just like, yeah, she was wearing a disguise and now she's not. She's been playing an act this entire time. She's been a different person throughout the entirety of this movie to everybody, even if they knew who she was or didn't. And now that she's no longer behaving as that person, this character that she has created, she removes the wig to be who she is. She strips off the act to reveal herself. Goofy. <laughs> I've, seen it okay, done, see. I've seen it executed better in other places, but that is what it's meant to be. See, Dallas, the sure. problem with what you just said is, I know what you were saying, like, oh, this is goofy. <laughs> oh, no. You can tell where I'm going with this. Really I just like... imagine, you know, she takes off the wig and it's like... Yuck, it was me. Like, <laughs> That'd be great if she was wearing a goofy mask the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Why do I do movie reviews with these guys? Oh, also, were hilarious. the great Helen Mirren, also <laughs> amazing as well. I'm sorry? Helen Mirren. That's a dragged, Judy dragged, Dench? Dragged, it's, it is Judy Dench, isn't it? Yes, it's Judy Dench. Is it Judy Dench? <laughs> Fucking, it's they look alike. It's very funny that we're all doing this because I was so certain that Angela Bassett was in the next movie. <laughs> Until she is her not. name didn't pop up on the tr in the credits, and I was like, "Who is that?" As, are you talking about Sophie Okaneda? Yes, <laughs> because I looked at the credits like Angela Bassett. I didn't see her name on it anything, and then Angela I saw Bassett. doom 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 doom. And, uh, that's not Angela. Bassett. It's so <laughs> we're just gonna keep getting people's names wrongs in these movies because there's mystery. so many of them. <laughs> there's so many people. Visuals and sound, guys. Um, I did like the vi like the interior of the train, like how the train looked. I thought it was really cool. It was very lavish, um, mm -hmm. and I like the contrast between, like, we start in Jerusalem, and then we cut to, you know, the train, and just the contrast between, like, this warm, bright environment and this train in the snow I thought was really good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, it feels like, how do I say? I usually don't like it when I can tell that you did a filmmaking thing in film because mm. it takes me out of it. It's like, mm. I can see that you're, I can see the the art behind it, and thus I'm less invested but in this case because i didn't care about the movie all that much i could see when it was like a less cool shot oh i see what you're doing there all right kenneth all right like it's there there's very clear filmmaking here in a way that like sometimes you see movies and it's like this just looks like a movie that's usually what i say a lot is this look like a movie right but this one i could see very clear like film things of like we're gonna shoot this this specific way or like the one shot where he's walking into the train with Michelle Pfeiffer and it just tracks. Like it's a tracking shot. It just tracks them. Go like from the outside the, of the he train. He tracks him through the train station, through the outside of the train. That whole time, it doesn't cut. It you know, like involves everybody. It's like that was very clearly like you were doing something and I see it and it worked and it was great. Uh, this is typically why I like trying to watch movies twice before we review them. Because the first time is just for me to like immerse myself in it and not think about it. I just want to watch it. And then the second time I watch it, then I'm going for more of a, a technical, like, I'm looking for the cool things that I like about it <laughs> mm, so that I yeah. can explain why mm. I liked it and not just, like, 
be like, I liked it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I want to talk about a point that Colin said, something that certain things can take you out of a movie. Mm-hmm. I definitely noticed how much fun they were having with a lot of the shots in this movie. And for oh, the most part, I yeah. enjoy it. I like the overhead shot. shot probably the most. I hate it. The shot in the hallway <laughs> when they're looking down at everyone's head. I think I hate it because when I saw it in the theater, it was disorienting for me. When I saw it in my house, I was like, okay, fine, whatever. But also, I don't like how long they stay with it. That's fair. But that's one of those shots that, you know, we're in the hallway. We're looking down at everyone in the hallway. I'm like, okay, that's a choice. I feel it. It made me feel weird and wonky when I was sitting in the big ass screen in a dark room. But then they go into that small room and they're still doing it. I was like, stop it, please. Somebody, where's the other camera? I think <laughs> I really liked it because we're on a train and this is uh-huh. a very cramped space. And yeah, even did though, a good job of that. Yeah, even though the movie's probably not filmed like on an actual train, like it's probably on a set. You can do whatever you want. You can move walls and you can put a camera wherever you want to, even though a camera can physically be there ever at all. There's something right. about the way that they creatively use this space in a realistic way to show you how claustrophobic it might be and how close yeah. contact and close quarters all these people are. Mm-hmm. And I think the the shot from overhead was the first time that I went, oh, we're getting real creative with these shots, aren't we? Because <laughs> I don't usually yeah. see shots like that. It's not usually something you do. That reminded me. I, I We spent too long talking about the characters, but Poirot's friend who owns the train book. or his oh, uncle book. owns the train, book, book. his horniness upset me. Like he has <laughs> that whole moment where he's like, oh, all these strangers on a train. You just, you gotta fuck, you know? There's something exciting about it. Like, but this is I why your uncle him. doesn't like you. He's my favorite character. Fun fact. <laughs> he's so the, fun. The actor who plays him is dating Daisy Ridley in real life. They met on this movie. Wow. Hey, shout out to Tom Bateman and Daisy Ridley. Happy couple. It's also funny because when he says that, I think the person he looks at is Michelle Pfeiffer. It is, yeah. And it is, you know, yes. Michelle Pfeiffer, well respected as being a baddie for decades. Mm-hmm. But I'm just like, yo, you don't see Daisy really sitting over there? <laughs> like, <laughs> he he is does like, in real life. Cougars, and exactly. that's fine. Yeah, he wants to be a cub. He wants to be a cub. But yeah, I love that dude. When he talks to a, also Penelope Cruz, fine as hell. And when he talks to her and she says, uh, Sin doesn't agree with me, and he just leans over, he's like, We should no longer speak and walks away. It's one of my favorite lines. Yeah, visually, I think it's a cool looking movie. There's there's something about this movie, the CGI, like, it's weird to me because the CGI doesn't look super real, but it does look super stylized. Like, and the same thing with the sequel, too, that also has like the same type of CGI where it's like, Were you not going for realism? You guys were going for like a very stylized kind of look because I'm curious as to that. This one reminds me of the Polar Express. Oh, interesting. I, I feel like I heard somebody say that. <laughs> there were some shots of the train that I was like, this doesn't look real, which is a choice, right? And it's an interesting choice for a movie that most of it looks real because most of it is just people in, in, in the train. Rooms, right? And so it's like, but then you get the outside shots and it's like, what, where is uh, Tom Hanks? Like what? Or Tom Hanks, is that? <laughs> yeah, I that's Tom Hanks. Hanks. Yeah. Like where? I, I don't know. That was weird to me. But it is CGI that has always stood out to me. And it, it's standing out to me again because the sequel looks like that as well. Also, well, I can talk about that when we get to favorite aspects. Well, we're, we're there. favorite aspects. Yeah. What's your favorite hey. aspect of this movie? Colin just reminded me it's probably the friend because he's just really funny to me. And he reacted the same way Colin did when Hercule was like, I think I might just let y'all go. He was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but also, I, I think that's funny, out, though. Because he lets them go, and they definitely are still on the train with Book. Yeah, he's like, I mean, what am I going to do? It's his now? train. Like, they got to still here's be on the Here's the thing, with him. though. Yeah. yeah. See, I feel like here's the problem. Hercule Perot has, like, a credibility that Book, Book, I feel like, would get stabbed 12 times before he could say anything. They wouldn't care about him. No. Yeah, they'd just be like, all right, let's get the knife out again. And, you know. Everybody lined up in the same order stabby, as last stabby. time. Right. Remember the batting order. <laughs> <laughs> but also, um... The scene when they first meet each other, like not meet, but like, you know, run into each other before he gets on the train. He's like, Hercule, book. And it's just like this refreshingly and for the time unrealistically sex positive <laughs> exchange. Where yeah. He's like, oh, I'm a prostitute. She is. I am. Hey. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> that was wonderful. There was no judgment. It was just a matter of fact. Oh, you're a prostitute. There was no secrecy. She was like, I am a prostitute. How did you know? You're very good. <laughs> 
but yeah, that was really funny to me. Uh, Colin, that's what's your great. favorite aspect? See, that's the thing is I think that points to my favorite aspect, which is the dialogue. Like, especially that scene was where, was when I sent that message saying like the dialogue is super sharp because it is like, mm-hmm. it's just, it's funny. It's witty without being like pretentious. It's just, I don't know. It's just like, to me, if you ask me how you write mystery dialogue, I would think it should be sort of snappy and quick and interesting, but not to the extent where you end up like with, um, I don't want to call him he who shall not be named because I feel like there are a lot of those. Like Josh Wheat then, I feel oh. like that's thought you were going in a different direction with that. quirky and snappy, but this hill level that was like, yeah, that, that's just good. I agree. I think my favorite part of this movie is the cast. I just love all-star casts in murder movies. This seems to be just a thing now. It's just fun. It's a lot of fun seeing a lot of your favorite actors just try and figure out which one of them is the murderer. That's fun to me. And this one had, at the time, you know, quite a number of my favorite actors of the moment. Like I said, Daisy Ridley, I was a huge fan of at the time. Leslie Odom Jr. Uh, was just starting out in movies, and I was just excited about him being in the movie. Michelle Pfeiffer mm-hmm. is amazing. Judy Dench is amazing. Helen Mirren. Yeah, Helen Mirren. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Josh Gad, I was a huge fan of Josh Gad at the time. Dan Fogler. Yeah. Yeah, there were just so many people in this movie that I, that I was a fan of. And then Kenneth Branagh, who I was also a fan of at the time because he had directed one of my favorite versions of Cinderella ever. Oh, yeah. I also want to point out that before Colin reminded me how much I love Book, or whatever his name is, I did write down my favorite aspects were the great cast, which Demi said, and that Hercule had some great lines, which is kind of like, you know, the dialogue. So both of your things were also mine, but that friend is just Wow, get fantastic. your own thing, Dallas. He did. He I, like, I like Hercules Portos, Colin. Leave me alone. <laughs> Hercules Portos. <laughs> Hercules Portos. And yeah. that leads us to what are you expecting from the next movie, Death on the Nile? It's been five years since the last one. And I think we found okay. out shortly after that we were getting a sequel and it's been five years. So I'm well, it ended with a sequel tease. So they I'm glad they got the sequel. There's been a death on the Nile. OK, oh, so I'm I'm calling it now. I have a guess, too. So I want to hear it's going to get really elaborate. It's going to get really confusing. We're not going to know what happened. And it's going to get to the end. And he's going to be like, did you you know, you did, did you think about like what? part of the Nile we're on and they'll be like what we're just on the what are you talking about he's like no we're on the western part of the Nile it was west Nile virus and that's what it's gonna be oh my Ooh. gosh like a mosquito Ooh. just flew in Colin. got through the mosquito net that's it Colin we are vibing because here's my theory <laughs> and I'm just gonna tie it into yours I'm gonna add it to yours I didn't mm-hmm. have a specified virus but I have a guess one of the characters gets sick with a virus and dies and they have to find out which person came on unvaccinated and got them sick. Spoiler alert. It's Leticia no. Wright's character. <laughs> yes. Oh, Colin, thank you for the alley Ooh, oh my God. Oh, <laughs> that no. was a slam dunk. Holy shit. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I feel like we might have burned a bridge there, but that's okay with me. <laughs> Yeah, I don't have any theories for this movie except for the fact that I don't think Emma Mackey's character is the one who did it because the trailers are heavily pointed at her and I don't think she's the one to do it because that feels like a red herring. Why are you giving away the movie if she's the one Is she the younger blonde? Yes, she is Emma Mackey. I'm super excited about the fact that she's in this movie. I love her on Sex Education. Mm. The Margot Robbie lookalike, as people like to say. Oh, she's the aggressive-ish one. Yes, Mal- I love her. Maeve? Maeve. Maeve, yeah. Like her. She's Maeve. That, was her. that is her, and I'm super excited. I think this is like the first big feature film that she's ever done. She's so talented yeah. on sex education, and I'm so excited about that. That's dope. She doesn't have a lot of credits. She, she does not up. have a lot of credits, no. <laughs> we're, we're making jokes about Letitia Wright, but Letitia Wright is a really good actor, so I am excited oh, yeah, 100%. to see like, what sh- her character is up to in this movie. I love Sophia Canedo. I like Gal Gadot. Who else yeah. is in this movie? There's a bunch of other people in this movie. Um, <laughs> Tom Bateman is back. Luke, my okay, boy. Okay, that I don't understand. Because watching the end of this movie, uh, Murder on mm-hmm. the Ori- Orient Express, I was like, he's still on the train. Is Poirot solving a whole different murder? And then he gets on this boat? <laughs> like, how does, <laughs> how does Book get here and back? <laughs> like... How does that how does that work? He was definitely on the train to wherever the train was going. Is he going to meet him on this boat in Egypt? What I'm huh? guaranteed that will be a plot point. It has to be. You have Just to explain how he's coming he got back. Here. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm wondering about that. Because the guy caught him and was like, oh, man, there's been a murder on the Nile. Yeah. So then, you know, he has to get from the Orient Express to the Nile. And then he gets there and they're all just having this party? Like, is this where the murder happened? But also, he's on the boat when the murder happened. So there must be a different Wait. murder that he solves before the right. actual oh, death on the Nile. So it's going to be like the f- it's going to be like the first one where there's a murder he's where there's a crime he's solving at the at the beginning. Yep. But it's a murder, but then there's another murder. But then there's another on murder the Nile. on the boat. Got it. Two deaths yeah. on the Nile. Yep. Okay. That has to be it. I think you're right. Yeah. It probably has to be. Unless they're just going to retcon that ending. Which is weird because like it's so interesting to me that this movie and it sounds like the second one. Well, I mean, you'll see it and you'll tell me, but like, it sounds like they kind of start with a cold open <laughs> of like, Hoo-hoo, watch me solve this case. And then we get to the real one. Like, you know yeah. what? I don't know why you did it, but I love it. That's what we're going to do every single time now. Yeah, I'm excited. I like Kenneth Branagh's portrayal of Poirot. It's kind of funny and it's amusing. I do feel bad that every time he makes one of these movies, there is a huge controversy with one or more of the actors right before the movie comes out. Yo, people were saying, like, I don't think this movie's going to come out. <laughs> what was it for the first one? Johnny Depp is in the first one. And oh, that was yes. like, and that was, right I remember after. talking about that because then it was like, right, oh, yeah. he's the one who the dies, so time. that's okay. And now it's, uh, well, now it's a couple Hannibal of people Lecter. in this new one. A few of oh, them. Oh, God. A few it's, people. Ooh. And like, totally and not his one, fault. Five Every... years ago? Yes. Right? He's like, He's like, oh, he's some good actors, man. And then <laughs> stories just keep going. It's like, all right. Well. It's like every single time he puts out one of these movies, there's a big controversy right before it comes out. And then this one has been pushed back since 2019. It was partially for alleged cannibalism. Well, that was the most recent pushback. <laughs> yeah. Better than that, it looks like a fun time. Oh, yeah. I'm sure it'll be just as fun as the first movie was. I don't know what to expect out of the ending because you're not going to do that. You all did it again. So that should keep people on their toes. I'm like, obviously, I don't think this would happen, but I wouldn't even be mad. I would laugh if they did that again. <laughs> if there's like everybody on the on the boat punched everybody on the boat. <laughs> also, we don't even know who died yet. Most people no. are assuming that it's Gal Gadot's character, though. Dang, really? Yeah, people are thinking that it's her. Can kill Wonder Woman. But we don't know who died yet. We didn't know who died in Murder on the Orient Express before we went into it either, though. So I think that's very interesting. True. Good point. Yeah, I'm a little disappointed that Angela Bassett isn't in it, but, <laughs> you know, it's cool. But Sophie Okonedo is great. Yeah, she's dope. So. I think I'm pronouncing her name correctly. I hope I am. Yeah, I mean, we've had fun with names today. So many names. So many names have come up, and... Dr. All You Thoughts, Hercules Portos. Russell Brand is in this movie. He is. Annette Benning is in this movie, and her last name is Book, which means she's related to Tom Bateman's character, so I'm curious. She's his mom. Aunt? Mom? Okay. That's dope. Again, I really like this cast. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens in this movie. I'm mostly mm-hmm. excited for Emma Mackey because I love her on Sex Education. Also, Rose Leslie's in this movie. She was great on Game of Thrones. It's going to be fun. Hopefully. I don't know. You know, people are going to die, but other yeah. than that. We're going to find <laughs> out, Dallas. So tune in next week, guys, because me and Dallas are probably going to review this movie. Yeah, we'll review it. You guys will find out next week. It is a mystery to you, just as it's a mystery to us. You could pass a voice it and say, this movie will be reviewed. Somehow. Who's reviewing it remains in question. It's a mystery. Again, it's all a mystery. Thank you guys for joining us. Yes. As always, we appreciate you and your time and your patience. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Crown Digital, Brandon and Io, for putting us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Thank you to me for editing and putting us on YouTube and defending the movie from our lack of suspension of disbelief. I try. Because, you know, somebody's got to do that. Ain't going to be me. Thank you, Colin, for vibing with me on our theories about the next movie. Because, man, I did not expect you to come in the way I came in. And it just, mm, mm, it worked out perfectly. Anyway, audience, let us know. What do you think of Murder on the Orient Express? Are you going to watch the next one? Which actor did you mistake for a completely different person? <laughs> Apparently, it happens a lot. Let us know in the comments. Or hit us on Twitter at y'all underscore different. Instagram and Tumblr at Creative Differences Podcast. Or Facebook.com slash Creative Differences PC. I've been engaging with a lot of murder mystery content lately, so if you want to talk about that, hit me up on Twitter and or Instagram at King Name Simple. Are you okay? This is we're gonna come back to that. Um, okay. <laughs> talk to me about some. I don't know. I don't really. I don't really rock with murder mysteries, so talk to me about something else. I guess. Uh, <laughs> Trains. Find me on what? Trains. I mean, you can. I don't really have a lot to say about them. I think they're cool, but I'm not like into trains. I'm not. You know. Not a feral equinologist. Oh what? Apparently that's the word for a train enthusiast.
That's incredible. Um, anyway, <laughs> find me on Twitter at Duck McGuck. You guys can shoot me your theories on this movie at Dreamy Film. Dreamy is spelled D-R-E-E-M-I. And you guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram. Thanks again for joining us. And you can find Gabby on Twitter at Dr. All Y'all Thoughts. One word. No underscore. <laughs> it's been different. Bye. Bye. Question. Uh, no, see, I have one for you, actually. Okay. I have another question. So you go first. Are you replacing Gabby now? No. Um, Did you and Kayla take turns stabbing her and now you're replacing her watching all the murder mystery stuff? Like, what happened, dog? Speaking of taking turns on someone, that leads to my question. Whoa. (laughs) What? No. (laughs) Also, somebody had to replace Gabby because she ain't coming back. Also, my question. I thought that was my job. Fair. I mean, you've always been here. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, we were both always here. Colin's question is silly. Since everyone in the movie took a turn going at Consetti, can we say they ran a train on him? Because I it's on a train. ran a train. A murder train. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I think we can, and I think we should, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what happened. All right. They all got it in. They did. They all penetrated him with them. All right. That's enough. <laughs>